What is going on, Charles Botenston? First of all, Happy New Year. And obviously, it's a couple of weeks into the new year. And essentially, we've probably already lost our goals. We've probably already lost all the habits that we wanted to do. Before I actually get into today's video, I kind of wanted to just bring up something before our self-image, how we view ourselves, how our internal state actually affects everyone else. And I was talking to someone that's actually the manager at Equinox, which is the gym here in New York City that I go to. And I told them a study that said, that 17 days into the new year is, if someone can go to the gym for 17 days into the new year, then they will most likely go for the second month. If they go for the second month, they'll might, will most likely go for the third month, fourth month. So Equinox recognized this is that most people when they sign up, they don't actually go, so they have a one year commitment. What Equinox also noticed is that this same study is that if you go for a certain amount of time, then Equinox will actually give you your initiation fee back. So your initiation fee is probably 200 or $300 at Equinox, which is a hefty amount of money when you're signing up. And what they say is that if you go for a certain amount of time and you check in, we'll give you your money back. They know that. If you keep on going for one year, you're probably gonna go for two years. Perfect example is me that I've been going since 2013. Since I've been going for 2013, that comes directly into what, we were, what we're gonna be talking about today is that how you actually view yourself. What, what's the identities that you actually walk around with? So an identity could be that I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm a male, I'm a female, I work in real estate, I bike, I run, I am always late, I'm excited, I'm enthusiastic. We put labels on ourselves. Uh, especially Especially nowadays, there's way too many labels. I don't think that labels are actually good, you know, especially when you're a young kid and someone says, this, like for me, I would have been classified in today's day and age as ADHD, probably drugged up on prescriptions of Adderall or something else along those lines. And I would have taken that through my entire life. My entire life, I would have been taking this identity when in fact, I just was not successful at school. I just didn't like it. I'm like the classic entrepreneur, just was you know unable to sit still in a class or an environment that I just didn't like or agree with what was actually going on. Not because I was a bad kid, but because I didn't know any better. Entrepreneurism when I was going to school wasn't a thing. It wasn't cool. It wasn't something you talked about. It was, it was actually considered that you have a problem with learning and you're probably not gonna be successful because yes, the mentality has actually changed a lot where you can actually go to school and recognize on YouTube or through books that there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there. So my self-image when I was growing up was terrible. I never thought of myself that I would be successful. I never thought that I would actually do something with my life. Why? Because I was being told externally by my teachers, society, my grades, school, everyone, even my friend's parents were saying, listen, I wouldn't hang out with this guy. I don't know what's going on, but he, he's not doing well at school. All my friends went to really good colleges and I, I, I got onto only two colleges, they weren't really good, but thank God I got into your college that essentially molded who I am. So self-identity, self-image, how you are, your emotions, there's so much behind this. So first of all is that how you actually feel about yourself is how actually how people view you. You know, you could fake that for a while, which is I feel confident, I feel excited. You know, you have the affirmations, you have the visualizations, which is all self-improvement, self-development, you know, 101, which is visualize, you know, being successful and things like that. But if you're not taking action, it's really fake. And you have fake in two ways, okay? You have fake that you don't wanna be found out as a fraud. And in, in other words, if you're putting out that you are a fitness celebrity or you're, you're really into health and you're not going to the gym yourself or you're not actually eating correctly yourself, you're a fraud. And if you're a fraud and you know you're a fraud, that gives you an insecurity. You could put that on for a while. I'll give you a couple examples right after this. You could, you could put that on or you could self-delusion yourself and say, no, I really am this, even though I don't eat properly and I don't go to the gym. So there's two types of people, the ones that actually self-delusion themselves and say, actually, it doesn't really matter what other people think. I feel I am, even though you don't do something. In other words, you don't go to the gym, you don't eat healthy, you don't live a uh, great lifestyle. And then the people that are doing it, but are actually, they know that they don't want to be found out. Here's the example. Uh, I met a very successful person. Won't go into any names. I actually met, th this This story kind of is a lot of people that I've met. I've spent hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, definitely over six figures in self-development courses, whether it's Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, you know, Jack Canfield, you know, 
all across the board, everyone, anyone that I would have any kind of just maybe some kind of knowledge, I would go and take their course. It didn't really matter how expensive it was. Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, I'm going to be spending money on that this year. I'm going to go back to Tony Robbins, another one. So this is the thing is that I would meet them and I'd be like, I thought you were more exciting or I thought you were more confident. It was really weird. You know, there, there's, there's coaches that I met in person and you see this whole facade online and it's not translated to you as the student, you as the follower, you as the, the mentor mentee or the mentor, the mentee. So in other words, what I'm getting at is you have the macro level that I'm talking about, which is, are you living up to the self-identity or the, the, just even the, the self-image that you have of yourself? Are you actually living into that? There is something to be said for actually faking it until you make it, but at a time, you do have to start making it. And the only way you can start making it is you start taking action. This happened with me. Two years ago, I was putting out all these things. You need to drink more water. You got to eliminate sugar. You got to eliminate carbs and bread and wheat and all these things and go you know, more of a vegetarian lifestyle. I'm not against people that eat meat. I probably only eat it once a month. However, I, I, I just wasn't living into that lifestyle. I was a fraud and I, don't wanna get, I didn't actually want to get found out. I didn't want to get caught. So essentially, I was living this lifestyle. I, I should say I was putting out this lifestyle, but not living the lifestyle. So this is the thing is that you, there's two things. Number one is the confidence that you get is when you actually keep, this is very important, when you actually keep promises to yourself. So promises to yourself would be, I'm gonna wake up on time, or I'm gonna wake up at a certain time and you don't snooze your alarm, or I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna go to the gym. And if you keep the promise where you wake up and you go to the gym, that gives you com confidence because you're keeping the promise to yourself. Nobody else knows this. Okay, you're not putting out your schedule and saying, I'm gonna wake up at five, I'm gonna to go to the gym at six, I'm gonna to go to work at, at seven, 7.30, and I'm gonna make sales calls at eight. You're not putting your schedule public. So there's this, this dialogue in your mind that says, well, it's not really a big deal, okay? It's not really a big deal if I don't do it. However, it is a big deal because you're not keeping promises to the public, but you're not keeping promises to yourself which is really where your self-image, your, your identity comes from, is that when you keep promises to yourself, you start saying, I am someone who wakes up early. I am someone that actually goes to bed early, wakes up early, goes to bed early, eats healthy, eats more greens than meat, or, or eliminates sugar, or only has sugar once every two weeks, or once a month, or you know, as, as little time as we want. Ironically enough, and I'm gonna get even into very deep into this. There's the image that we put out there, okay? Then there's the image that we, we know of ourselves. We know if we're happy, if we're excited, if we're enthusiastic, if we truly are living the ethos of whatever we want to become. You know, it could be a father, are you a good father, are you a good mother, are you good colleague are you a good manager are you, are you a good worker whatever the case is you could be putting that out there but in fact you're really not even deeper than that is when you meet someone they actually feel through emotions this is how we survived okay nobody nobody actually well I shouldn't say nobody because I learned it from someone is that when you actually meet someone they feel exactly how you feel so if you are excited if you're enthusiastic like right now, how you're actually viewing me, based on my facial expressions, based on my tone of voice, everything combined is how you're actually taking this in. In other words, how I feel about myself is actually translated through you non-verbally, okay? If you're in sales, if you are a manager, if you're trying to influence, we all are by the way. We're all trying to influence other people, uh, whether that's clients, social media, our boss, uh, people underneath us, colleagues, it doesn't matter, we're always selling. Okay, we're selling our idea all the time and then we sell it to ourselves. And what I wrote down here is actually this quote that I, I recently read over. It said, how we view ourselves is how others view us. How we view ourselves is how others view us. Even more important is how you feel is actually getting absorbed by others, okay? So in other words, if you're feeling down, why is it that everyone else around you starts feeling down? or nobody wants to interact with you that's excited and happy because they know and they feel and they're getting absorbed by your energy. So ironically enough, when you're excited, when you're enthusiastic, when something happens in your life, why do people just start getting attracted to you because they wanna be around that energy? Really, it doesn't come down to how you're feeling now. In other words, when you keep promises to yourself, 
you start getting confidence. When you start getting confidence, you're more bold and excited and enthusiastic. When you're more bold, enthusiastic and excited, you start attracting those people and you start actually resonating that to others. They start feeling that, they start getting attracted to you. And then you actually start this cyclical loop. This is perfect example is that I haven't filmed in probably two and a half, three weeks, probably three weeks. I haven't filmed a video in three weeks. I've been keeping this in my dialogue or in my mind, this dialogue that, dude, you gotta make the video, you just gotta make the video, it's gotta make the videos. And I was actually losing confidence because I actually wasn't keeping the promise to myself. This is really deep. This is really deep. This is this is on a subconscious mo this is on a subconscious level. And the thing is, if we're not actually aware of it, we can't actually change it. So the basics to self-image to your identity is keeping promises to yourself. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum is your promises to yourself equate to your self-image, which equate to your confidence, which actually equates to how people view you and how people absorb you and how people actually resonate or not resonate with you. Why do successful people become more successful? Why do happy people surrounded by happy people? Why do athletes surround themselves with other athletes? It's because they're talking the same language. But if you're going to emotions, your emotional state, your emotional baseline, whatever that is, is the people you resonate with and the people that resonate with you. I don't know what you got out of this, but I, I, I kind of wanted to, to put this into a, put verbally the things that are happening that are nonverbal, that were, I don't know, it just feels right. I don't know, I just like this person. It just feels right hanging out with them or dating or you know their client or business or why does someone hire you when you've done absolutely no business in real estate? You're a brand new agent. Agent. It's because, I don't know, it just feels right. I just trust them. You have no resume of selling homes, yet they hire you for the first time. They hire because of the way you are. And, and the way you are comes all the way back to your self-image, your identity, and originally keeping promises to yourself. So hopefully it's, I don't know if this helps at all, but that's that's the deeper level of, of confidence and, and identity. Two books that I would recommend. Uh, the first one is is Mastery by something Leonard, and the second one is actually more on the lines of uh, the six pillars of self esteem. There you go. So highly recommend both of those books, Mastery and the Six Pillars of by Nathaniel Brandon. Both of those books are really good and they go deeper into each level. So have an amazing day. Subscribe to the video if you guys have any comments or any topics that you want me to cover. Make sure that you leave it in the comments below. I do read them. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.